Welcome back to another special feature episode of Midnight Double Feature. Uh, this one is truly special uh, because we have all four of us here. Uh, Matt, say hi. G'day, g'day, g'day. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Colin, say hi. G'day, g'day. And Danny, say hi. Hey. All right. <laughs> now that we've gone around the circle, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> uh, but no... Essentially, uh, as you guys can probably tell, we are fast approaching our episode 100. Whoop, whoop. Um, and if, you, if you're on our socials, you can see uh, that that episode is going to be a massive one. We're going to be covering Star Wars A New Hope, um, which is a massive, a massive deal for us. Uh, so the thinking behind this particular episode is that it's more of a sort of like a primer, um, just because we kind of anticipate that episode being a bit long. Um, and essentially, this is going to be an episode where we're going to be giving our uh, opening thoughts about Star Wars Episode Four, and uh, you know, we'll we'll we we'll probably. Uh, you know, by way of conversation, sometimes lead into the other movies, even though, you know, we'll try and keep it on track. Uh, but that's fine. You know, if it leads, it's a series, right? Like, yeah, right. Exactly. I think that's it. We should also-, also maybe spoiler alerts if you haven't seen it. <laughs> Yeah, Fuck if you. if you haven't seen this 41 year old movie, <laughs> <laughs> I love Matt in the background. Fuck you. <laughs> Um, I think we should also make special note of this is going to be the very, very first episode ever um, of Midnight Level Feature where all four members are on together for the entire episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a big deal. I, yeah. I think I made a, a brief cameo in, I think it was- Guardians. Guardians, yeah, yeah of the galaxy. But um, And we are, I guess technically there was like our intro episode mm-hmm. when um, me and Danny joined, but like which went for like 10 seconds. But like, yeah, this is the first. It's the first one, and um, every hundred years, the actual Star Wars episode will too. <laughs> every hundred years, this this crew just gets together on one episode <laughs> and just bangs it out. When it's, the it's, planets align, it's, it's, it's midnight so, double feature. It <laughs> shall so, unite. It's so powerful, nature will only let it happen once every hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So yeah. look, let's uh, let's let's take it turn by turn, uh, and you know, on this episode, we can interrupt each other and talk shit. But uh, yeah, so let's let's start off with. All right, Danny. I know you're the biggest shit. Star Wars fan <laughs> here, apparently. <laughs> so you're gonna go last. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna start with me. No, I just said you're gonna go last, bitch, because you're the biggest <sighs> fan. <laughs> okay. Uh, Matt, you go first. Uh, yeah. So, um, where do I'll you la- start, right? Where do you begin? Well, I've got to start with. Um, I don't remember the first time I saw this movie. I was that young. Um, but what I what I do know is that I love the orig- original trilogy so much. And I was still quite a few years away from getting the prequel movies that um, I took the initiative to make new sequels. And I drew my own Star Wars comics, not knowing mm. the Star Wars comics was already existing and it was a thing. And, um, yeah, I used to draw draw stuff a lot from this film and Empire. Um, it, I grew up with it, you know, Super Star Wars and Super Nintendos. You're sort of retelling this. Big part of my childhood as well. Love this movie. Like, it, it's... The character design, especially in the costume design, is a so unbelievably freaking incredible. It was so ahead of its time in so many regards, especially knowing that behind the scenes, how much of a fucking nightmare it was to make and how no one had faith in this. Mm. Um, that being said, like looking at it now, like 40 something years ahead, like there's some shit I look at and I'm like, oh, this would not fly anymore. I think it's aged well. I don't think it has aged amazingly. Um, but knowing like what I find like really interesting is like the behind the scenes stuff where like, there are so many scenes that are cut out of this movie, um, and how it was just kind of saved in the editing room. Um, we'll probably get more into that a bit later, but that is like one of the big highlights for me for this film is knowing what this could have been and how it could have been a complete pile of trash, but end up being probably arguably the most influential film of all time. That's, that's amazing. Um, and I just, I just need to reiterate how much I fucking love the the costume design in this film. So incredible. And also the score. You, you can't go past that. Um, For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I might drop it there. Nice. Colin, hit me. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, my, especially with, with a new hope, <clears throat> I don't know how many times I had seen this one compared to the other ones. I feel like I saw Empire Strikes Back and, and a lot of the, um, um, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the prequels, prequels and stuff. Yeah. Because I mean, I was right at that age when it came out. Uh, I couldn't tell you the first time I saw this thing all the way through like a hundred percent. I remember seeing bits and pieces of it on TV um, when I was a kid on good old Fox 17. Um, and I can remember even the Simpsons having like commercials that made like a parody of it where Homer was Vader trying to shoot down Bart and the X-Wing. And I, I was like, oh, ha, ha, Star Wars is fucking great. Um, it really wasn't until uh, I mean, it's it's just kind of it's crazy that it's just uh, you mean a new hope. It's just kind of been this like cultural osmosis where a lot of people like feel like that they've watched this thing like through and through. But it, it probably I mean, it's probably high school before I can say that I I actually know that I watched this all the way through. Um, and I can remember – and I, I don't know if you were there, Danny. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, Danny and I were part of this elusive group called the Basement Crew. Um, this uh, this very exclusive <laughs> – That's the lamest thing I've ever had in my the, life. The, the exclu- it's not a boy band or anything. It's an R&B group. <laughs> um, it was uh, – we, uh, we had a couple albums. Yeah, yeah, nothing, <laughs> nothing really crazy. Um, but <clears> – <throat> A bunch of us, me, him, Spencer, Josh, Marsali, Dan, Marsali, Marsalis, Danny, Marsali, Marsali. Um, a bunch Aaron. of us who grew up together. Yeah, Aaron, uh, Josh, and Joseph, every everybody, man. Uh, and I mean, these are the guys we hung out with all the time. I this think is like our childhood. This is like our childhood click. Is yeah, is who he right, just dude, sounds There's like a secret podcast. That. Anybody <laughs> listed in that crew automatically would get a stabbing for a, if somebody fu- if somebody fucked with them. I will stab a motherfucker over them. Like I swear to God, like <laughs> like those are some of my best friends growing up Colin but, as your lawyer I can't advise you I can't yeah. advise that, <laughs> well that's because you're not worth stabbing someone over so have Jesus that's um, true no, that's fair <laughs> that's fair um, so I remember if I can get to the end of this fucking story finally um, we I, we all <laughs> stayed up one night and we watched uh, Phantom Menace Attack of the Clones um, Revenge of the Sith and then New Hope Empire and Return of the Jedi and we watched oh, all God. of these like in a row and it was like 12 or 13 hours of Star Wars and I'm not going to sit there and say that I made it to the end I think I started knocking out somewhere around Revenge of the Sith or I'm sorry um, Empire Strikes Back um, but th- the thing about New Hope that gets me is that when you compare it to the other films, um, it's not nearly as good. It's crazy. Like what Matt said, this movie is a beautiful, juggling, clumsy mistake. Like there's so many things that could have gone wrong. Like this is like it's like it's like it's like a plate of food that gets thrown in the air and the plate lands and all the food lands on the plate right where it was. And it's like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, how did you do that? Um, because there I is some agree behind more. This- yeah, there's a lot of, you know, behind the scenes stuff that was just crazy with getting this done. Uh, nothing on this on this kind of scale had been, I think, truly attempted before with this with this kind of stuff. Um, and, and I think that I I'm so appreciative of what George Lucas did. And we can get into some of the uh, ethics of George Lucas on the episode if we want to. There's a couple. Of, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of shit in there, man. George Lucas is no is no saint, uh, to be completely honest. And but at the same time, I mean, the guy fucking made Star Wars. And it's like, dude, like that is so fucking crazy to think about. Um, and for whatever things that George Lucas has done, um, you know, at the same time, when he sold Star Wars to Disney, he got four billion dollars and basically donated all of it. And like, holy shit, like to charity, he's like, I will never spend that much money in my lifetime. Um, and I mean, there's just so many nice things that he's done. And I I I like this movie. I'm not going to say that I just fucking love it. It's definitely not my favorite. Um, there's some things about it that you can see them. This is like the big block of clay and not until maybe Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi are they really taking a hatchet and just chopping shit to it and getting the pieces uh, defined. But all in all, I am not in love with this movie, but I am I am. Um, it's kind of like I'm married to this person that I don't really love anymore, but we had a beautiful kid and I'm in line. I love the kid. Oh, I'm wow. like appreciative of it. And I'm like, Oh, thank you for that. But wow. I mean, I don't, I don't really like you, but um, you're forced to pay child support. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, fucking $4 billion of alimony. Cha-ching. Um, oh, yeah. but, oh, yeah. uh, but either way, I mean, that's just, that's just kind of my thoughts wrapped up in a nutshell. What about you, Zoheb? 
Well, man, Jesus Christ, what do I begin with this? Um, this is my favorite Star Wars movie of all time. Um, oh, God. Yeah, look, Ooh. I wholly recognize it is not the best made, uh, but it is the movie that has the most Star Wars moments for me. Um, and most of that, I think I think most of that is like tied to nostalgia because like you guys, uh, Danny, we haven't got to your thoughts yet, but I'm assuming it's the same. Um there, for me, it's like there's not really one moment where Star Wars hasn't been in my life. I can't really remember when Star Wars entered, um, which to me just feel, makes it makes it feel like that it goes like way, way, way back to when I was like, um, I don't know, probably a fucking fetus. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, like my, uh, I think the person that introduced this to me was my dad. Uh, my dad always like talked about how he watched this movie in Fiji and, uh, you know, when he was a kid and um, uh, he, he loved it as well. And uh, oh, it's just, it's just wild. And I remember like, this was one of those movies along with the other two in the original trilogy that we would always go to this local uh, video store. It was a mom and pop, you know, like video store and we'd just rent the videos. Uh, I don't know why we never bought the fucking actual videos. Like we just kept renting them and renting them, uh, <laughs> which was fucking retarded. <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah man like this this was this is like even watching it now every time I do watch it cuz I've seen this a billion times like uh, when I wrote notes for this episode coming up, this episode 100, uh, I was just like, why am I writing this? <laughs> I, I can, I, I know it all off by heart. Um, because I have seen this an incredible amount of times. Uh, I remember it, like airing on TV and, uh, I remember it, I remember just me like watching it on TV, uh, you know, with the com commercials and all that bullshit. Uh, but not really necessarily sticking out for the other two. Um, the other two we'll get to when we cover them eventually. Like we'll we'll get to those. Um, uh, but episodes two and three hundred probably. Hey, episodes two and three hundred. Yeah, probably two and three hundred. <laughs> so guys, if you stick stick with us here at Midnight Double Feature, uh, that's a hit of things to come. Uh, but no, like to, especially Empire, it's just it's just a massive tonal shift. Um, even though you've still got like some great Star Wars moments, uh, Return of the Jedi is kind of a return to this kind of tone, uh, but not done as well in my opinion uh it, this is just the one that just makes you go this can stand as a standalone story this is the one that uh just gives you all the feels it gives me all the feels at least uh john williams score george lucas is directing um like you said colin no saint but he is the guy that started mm -hmm. all this right like uh he had influences he had influences like uh flash gordon like dune um you know there was things that like outside influences that kind of like help this come together like it is, but um, it, it's, it, I mean, like the guy's a genius, um, even though, you know, people did help him. Um, but man, like watching it again, Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford, fucking Chewy. Uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> there are so many like, right, exactly. <laughs> there are so I, many. That's one of those things that, that's one of those things you try doing when really nobody else is around before you try and do it publicly. You want to yeah. see if you can make the noise. I have never, I can't yeah, really make I, it. I can't. I can't, so I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. Neither can Matt. Matt's trying over here. I think I'm getting close. <laughs> he's, he's I'm sure, looking at sure. him like... <laughs> no. uh, fuck you. I could do it. But that was better. You sound like a baby bird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Colin, I wanted to hit on something that, that you said. I wanted to hit on something you said, Colin. Um, so you first watched it all the way through in high school? I, no, no, that's to say, like, dude, as a kid, I just I'm sure I saw it in like bits and pieces. I know I did. I mean, I could have <clears throat> I could have sat there and literally missed the first 15 minutes and watched all of the rest of it. I just I just don't remember. Like, we did not have this when I was a kid on VHS. Um, we were not a big like sci fi house. My parents didn't have anything against them. They went saw them when they were, you know, in their 20s and shit. Um, but. I remember I actually remember seeing these across the street now with my neighbor Ben and they had them on that gold VHS box that they came <laughs> out in the remastered one in like 97. Um, yeah, that. yeah, I fucking think everybody did. So I, I know I definitely watched them there at some point. Well, I just want to just jump in and say, like, Colin, I don't really blame you because as a kid, I thought of the original trilogy. This is the most boring because it had the less 
the least amount of action. And as a kid, obviously, you know, I want to see the lasers hit people and stuff like that. Um, sure, I guess there's a bit more, I guess, design and world building and stuff. But as a kid, like, it didn't speak to me as much because of, um, I would actually argue there are parts in this film that are kind of boring, honestly. How dare you? This nah, is going right. to be there such are literally a good three, I can't wait. Okay. In the first act, there's literally, and I don't want to get too off target, there's literally a scene where R2D2 and C3PO are in the desert, they split off. In the literal next scene, they get kidnapped and reunited. Hey, are you reading my notes? Can you no, fuck no, I'm not. They literally get reunited the <laughs> next scene. And then they, and then we have to watch fucking five long minutes of negotiating price for droids, and it's like, where the fuck is this movie going? Like, what? How is this interesting? How I mean, is it this- takes its time. It's, it takes its time. It does like- not move the plot forward. It does not establish hold character. On, hold on. It has no business being in the film. And it's like moments like that. It's like this is not entertaining. Just, this is boring day in the life stuff. Just because, like, just because it's not entertaining doesn't mean it's not like, like, expanding this massive universe. It's like, what? Hold on, wait, wait. Bad job. While while they're um selling these goddamn fucking droids, like, you've got just think about the Jawas. Like, think about like what they're doing. Like, well, they're fucking stealing these droids and passing them off as, as their own. But like, how look that, at how that, many there are. How does it benefit the plot? Uh, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't have to. It, 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 benefits, doesn't, it, it benefits universe building. Right, it does. Yeah, but do they come back Do they come back into the story later on? That's, that's not they necessary. They, you talk, would, that's, okay, they, talk okay. him, they talk to him in the prequels, but then it's just, again, just to give you that Star Wars magic. Okay, right, so exactly. by that logic, you must love the plotline in Last Jedi where they go to the casino planet and they get to do all that other stuff because that's doing exactly what you're saying now. That's that's not the same thing to say because if that were an entertaining scene, then it would have been cool universe building. But that scene feels so ridiculous that it, it's not fun universe build, building, but it's still the same element of Star Wars. That sequence but that comes in, with an action scene. This doesn't. That sequence in Canto Bite, uh, in in Last Jedi, I I like I don't like that for what it does with the story with <laughs> Finn's story, but I do like the I, I do like that we get to see this casino planet. Like I like. It, the fact that they're showing I mean, us new environments. That's okay. Like, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I'm down with that. But it's not my favorite universe building moment. No, no. Uh, it doesn't like, mean that I don't dislike all of it. It doesn't mean I don't right. like those in general, though. Like, it doesn't always have to be propulsing the story forward. Like, even though this movie, I think, uh, I mean, look, once we get to the hour mark, it goes fucking head on, like, oh, right yeah, towards the for end. Sure. Uh, yeah. But these are like, this is a great example of some of like the. The minor flaws that I think are like from early on in the film, and maybe that's something they would have cut out if it wasn't like kind of the way we meet Luke, because that wasn't meant to be the scene where we meet Luke, um, which I guess we'll go more into in the next episode. But that's an example of like, yeah, why Colin to tie back to your point, why like as a kid myself, I I didn't want to watch this as much as the others because there are moments that as a child it's less exciting. On a surface level, yeah, I think um, I think what gravitated for me was was Luke. Uh, I mean, like like for everyone, right? Like he's your entry point into this universe, even though he's not the introduced immediately. But for me, as a kid with Luke, I I love this whole idea of like it's this hero's classic hero's journey. Uh, like there's this guy who absolutely wants is ambitious. He wants to get off this planet. He wants to do some good. Uh, and in the end, man, like he's just he saves the fucking galaxy, like from becoming a farmer. Like you know, his uncle was like, "Oh, let's just do some farming shit, and you can go to the academy next year." Like, come on, dude, that's awesome. I love that shit. Empire doesn't have that. Empire goes deeper into the universe and does the whole "I am your father." Sorry, spoilers. <laughs> I don't know, for me, like, so that is very standard, especially now. Um, and as a kid, that's amazing. But me watching it now. In hindsight, and trying to remove the nostalgia glasses, which is very hard to do, I'll admit. Um, it's like, yeah, parts like that, it's like, this is not as impressive to me anymore. Hmm. And I don't credit Star Wars for starting that. I do credit Star Wars with so many other things, especially in the VFX department. Like, holy shit, we could do a whole podcast that's talking about the special effects and costumes and, and the, oh my God, the score, John Williams. But, but yeah. Yeah, so, 
Um, I think, I think, uh, I think it doesn't have to really do with, um, Jesus Christ. Sorry, you sidetracked me there. Uh, sorry, finishing my thoughts. I was trying to, I was trying to remember where you were at to help and I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, I can't, I can't. Uh, but anyway, look, man, I fucking love this movie. It's my all time favorite. One of my all time favorite movies of all time. Jesus Christ. Uh, I can't talk. Um, but this movie I can revisit and just chuck on any time. I was watching it last night, taking notes, and my brother just sits down next to me and he's like, let's fucking watch this shit. Like, oh, you know, yeah. it's just one of those it's just one of those movies, man. Like you can just put on, have a great fucking time. It's pure escape escapism. Uh and just just quickly, Matt, do not retort because we will go into a, a massive rabbit hole again. <laughs> I think <laughs> I, I think I think it doesn't need to um it doesn't need to do it this story first. It just needs to do it as good as possible. And I think the story is done as well as possible. Um like it just feels natural. Like the way these characters bump into each other, the way they go on this like a, like epic journey. I, for me that's just I love that shit, man. Um it does have all the beats. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um but anyway, guys, uh <laughs> Danny, give me your fucking thoughts, dude. Okay, um, so uh, you said it really well earlier, Zohib, that there was just never a time where this wasn't in your life. Like ever since I remember watching movies and understanding like, you know, oh, there's this is the difference between a TV show and a movie. That is what kind of captivated me to, to watch them and to explore all the other ones. So um, I, I just, I was the type of person that watched this so often that, and it was so ingrained as like the standard of what an mo- excellent movie is supposed to be because I just always heard it hyped up even when I was, you know, when, when I was young, uh, like, you know, super young. And so um, whenever I would go and see other movies, it's never that I thought about while watching a new movie, how does this compare to Star Wars? Like, because it was in my head, just the standard was it was just so, so high that it just didn't even, nothing else ever competed with it and the scale of it and just how creative and just unique and, and it just crazy it is. So um, I've always watched them. I've loved all of them. Um, and the uh, it's, it's weird, like in a weird way, like Colin was explaining that there's a group of us that sat in a basement for like 12 hours and watched TV, like watched all of them to collectively. Right. So I don't know about you guys, but sitting in a, sitting somewhere and watching TV for 12 hours is, is not, is not easy. Right. Like <laughs> you would, you would want to get up eventually and just start walking around. You'd get anxious eventually. Right. So like, that's the type of like gravity that it has and like culturally. So it like bonds people enough to want to like watch them as a marathon and talk about them and like spend that much time exploring all the universe and the lore behind it. So um, it is in like a weird way, kind of like transcended just being a movie. And it's like such a pop culture and great thing now that it really is like everywhere. You can always see it related to something wherever you're at. Um, so yeah, I, on the next ep- episode of Oprah. Um, <laughs> no. uh, so love it. Uh, this isn't my favorite one. Uh, Empire Strikes Back is my favorite Uh I remember Colin and I uh, used to work at the same place. It was like, it was this grocery store. There's a ton of our friends that worked there too. And there's these trucks that would come in in the morning. We'd go in and unload them. And there was one time we were all having to like be stocking on the same aisle. And we got into that discussion and everybody was naming off their favorite Star Wars movie. And because I guess all of us were just kind of nerdy or, or whatever, but um we all ended up talking about it i remember like even then i didn't even have to think about it even though no one had ever really like stopped and asked me that probably before like the second we had to think about it i was like oh it's easy the empire strikes back so um that would be really cool when we do get to that one um but i still like love all the star wars magic that exists in this one that we were kind of sorry about about um a minute ago so i'm excited to get into talking about this my nice and concise thoughts on star wars on that note, Danny, can I ask you guys a question, which I think maybe it'll be a quick thing, maybe it's going to go into a whole thing, but in the original trilogy, what was everyone's favorite? I feel like most people say Empire, and so oh, I just want to ask, it, yeah. what is your favorite, and if the answer is Empire, you know, rank them, rank them, because people often debate, you know, Jedi versus New Hope and things like that, so... Um, really? I, um... I haven't heard. I mean, like well, most of the lists that I've seen have put like Jedi right at the bottom. 
Mm. I know I a lot of people say, do hate the Ewoks. In yeah. Empire, Jedi, and Hope. Honestly. I agree. Empire, yeah. Jedi, and, Hope. And it's actually Holy for the exact fuck. same it's for the same exact reason that uh, Matt explained earlier that this movie that feels like there's some boring spots in it. And the other ones are a little bit more captivating and interesting that way. I feel like comparing a new hope to uh comparing a new hope to you know what a new hope, Empire, and uh, Return of the Jedi, it's like Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT. Dragon Ball, it's more focused on the adventure. Empire, Z, more about the action and cool shit and the twist. And then the third one, it's like, oh, it's kind of a bit of both, but it's just not done as good as the other two. But together, it kind of makes something special. So what's your rank? Um, Just look what they said. Oh, okay. Yeah. So- um, Empire, Jedi- Hope. Am I living in a in a in a in a mirror dimension or some shit? Like what? No, you're it's because they, they they built on what made a New Hope <laughs> great and improved it. I'd say. No, I I mean like man, I for me obviously it's uh, New Hope, Empire, Jedi. So New release Hope, order. Empire, Jedi. Um, but man, like I tried to watch Return of the Jedi very recently, and I doze off in the Ewok section, man. Like, I I am just out. Um, so what makes the Ewoks better than the Jawas to you? There's not... I mean, the Ewoks are so much prevalent, so much more prevalent than Jawas. Okay. Like, yeah. I mean, like, the fact that they can kill stormtroopers who are armoured. Like, I mean, come on. You don't think... Okay, so you're like, that's dumb? Th- that's fucking... That's not dumb, dude. That's, like, a whole next level of dumb. <laughs> like they're, they're throwing rocks and shit, and, like, meanwhile... It's, it's a metaphor for Vietnam, though. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't well, give a see, fuck. And that's where, that's where shit gets fucked up, because it's supposed to be goddamn Wookiees, dude. Apparently, yes. it's supposed to be Wookiees. Yeah. Uh, apparently. I don't know. I've heard that's a rumor. I've heard that disputed some. So just throwing that out there. I've heard that, it's too. Okay. I don't know what the truth is, but I have heard both of that, yeah. Um, I I do I do actually Matt off the back of uh, Matt's question. Um, so Matt, you asked what I uh, like to rank our, to rank our sort of ever movies. The, the children, my yeah. my my uh, question is out of all what is it ten movies now? Oh, right? you want to rank them all? No, I don't want to rank them all. Um, what is everyone's best Star Wars moment? Oh. Because I've well, got mine, I'll, I'll I'll give you guys a second to to kick it. I like to think I've got mine, and it happens in this movie, man. Um, and look, this is a spoiler for the actual episode, so I do apologize. Um, okay, new rule: there's no such thing as a spoiler for Star Wars. Okay, no, no for the episode, okay. for the episode. So now I will say, I actually believe it or not, I've never seen Force Awakens, never seen Last Jedi. I'm I aware of that. Not, yeah. I have not watched them. I've seen Rogue One. Yeah. I even have Force Awakens here. I've just, I've just never really. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's just kind of one yeah. of those things where once you watch it, there's just that. It's kind of like Futurama. I've had all seasons of Futurama for like six years, and I have like one last season to finish. I've never finished it because once it's done, it's done, and I'm never gonna get to watch it. And I'm like, fuck, man. Like, I want something new. You know, I don't. I always like knowing that there's Star Wars movies I haven't seen. Uh, and eventually I'll get around to seeing them. But if I had to pick my favorite moment, um, God yeah. damn, nothing out of the second yeah, one. Fuck nothing me, out of, I'll just- yeah, yeah, no, 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 definitely fuck you. Um, <laughs> nothing, nothing out of the second or the third or the or the fourth. Uh, obviously, you know, no, I am your father. You know, that's awesome and shit. Um, I would have to say either the battle with Darth Maul or the uh, end of Rogue One. Oh, nice. Good choices, dude. I like that you had one of the new ones in there as well because... That's that's tough to do. Yeah, a lot of people wouldn't have a moment from any of the new stuff well, on dude, there. People, so. fucking yeah, doubt, people doubt Phantom Menace and rightfully so, but... Dude, that fight with Darth Maul is like, yeah. that is one of the, it's pr- probably, epic. it's probably the best fight out of all the ones that I have personally seen. So, oh, th- like, as that's a just kid, my two that was, that fight scene was the defining moment in my childhood. Like, they're doing backflips now with lightsabers <laughs> during the period of my life when I'm obsessed with Jackie Chan. That's massive. Oh, you know, you know we, went, we went and got like <laughs> the sticks that you get, uh, like these wooden rods that you can get like a hardware store. Like that was the exact <laughs> length of what a lightsaber would be, and we bought a bunch of those and sword fought with everybody. Like it was, we reenacted that shit, man. Like, For sure, man. Like, yeah. and, <laughs> and as as you heard, Colin's rendition of Duel of the Fates just then uh, <laughs> Dude, that absolutely makes that scene as well. So. I will. I will. Z- I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Matt. 
I was going to say, Z, what is your favorite moment? Because you you were so rudely interrupted. Yeah, thank you, Dick. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I, I honestly, my favorite moment happens in this movie, and it is Han Solo streaking out of the sun and just blasting that Tie Fighter next to Darth Vader, and being oh. like, "Come on, kid, let's blow this thing and go home." Like that that moment for me. Just so triumphant. Okay. And, and at the same time, Luke's about to blow up the Death Star and you've got that John Williams score just like about to peak, like, you know, before it all goes silent and then the Death Star gets blown up. Like, I just love that moment of redemption for Han as well. Um, you know, obviously now, 41 years later, you're expecting it because it's mm-hmm. a, it's, I guess it's a tropey thing to do, but... Uh, imagine, man, imagine sitting in there in 1977 and just, like, watching that moment, like, seeing the Falcon streak out of the sun. Vader's like, what? And, like, you know, it's just, oh, it's just so the, awesome. The dude. only time he shows emotion other than, <laughs> no, in episode three. Definitely one of my favorite moments uh, in, in the entire Star Wars uh, Star Wars saga, for sure, dude. Like, I, I adore that moment. And um, yeah, it's just a fantastic way to finish this, this movie for me. Uh, so, Matt, hit me with your, your you favorite. You know, it's easy to think of the moments I dislike than the moments I like. Like you said, yeah. dislike, Vader screaming no, Yoda fighting in episode two. Um, uh, Wait, not so- going to lie, love that as a kid. Yoda. <laughs> love I, that I as thought a kid. it was dumb even back then. I didn't <laughs> like it. Also, never liked Count Dooku. I, I just never. But um, I think favorite moment, uh, it might be... Oh, another thing I hate, I hate how Obi-Wan dies in this film. I think it's so mm-hmm. dumb. And I think the Force Ghost was an afterthought. Like, why Why does he just turn to a robe? Why does he let him do that? There's no reason for Obi-Wan to let him die. Because I'll become more powerful than ever imagined. Not in this film, though. And, um, <laughs> and, and I really resent Not when today, people dude. say... Yeah, and I really resent when people say George Lucas had the sequel planned. Because he didn't. He didn't. The sequel was A Splinter of the Mind's Eye, which is a book in case they couldn't get them funding. And then they wrote the script. And that's a completely different story with completely different characters. Han Solo is not even in it. Neither is Chewie. Um, that's a whole other conversation, though. But I think if I had to pick a favorite moment, um, it might be something as simple as... <clears throat> you know what? I think it's actually from this movie. I think it's um, Luke grabbing Leia and swinging over the... That's my brother's favorite thing. moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But, like, it's kind of tied in Jedi where they also do that in Jabba's palace. Because, I know, it just to me, it's like... It's such an... It's a, it's when I think of heroic moments in cinema, that's, that, that's right up there with, like, Superman catching Lois Lane, jumping over the building. Like, when I think hero, yeah. it's something like that. It's very Indiana Jones as well, but, like... Oh, I guess it's predates. So let Jones. me ask you a question. You you like the uh, the the moment of Leia kissing uh, Luke and being like for luck. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great until they ruined it by making them brother and sister. Oh, it was exactly as I intended. Which yeah. <laughs> which which like it's like what's the benefit of uh, saying you're the writer, you're writing the film. What's the benefit of making them related? How does it improve the it story? Doesn't. That's it doesn't. another reason why I don't like the sixth one. Like it just it's just an addition that's just not really yeah needed. Um, well, I I agree with you for that. Actually, Jedi might actually have more flaw uh, story wise more flaws than this film. Maybe well, actually, when I'm thinking about it now, like that whole Jabba's palace thing takes up the first twenty minutes <laughs> right. and does not go to the woods. The plot does it. He's rethinking his really? life now. Thanks. Well, he, so had to, he had to he had to save Han, uh, but. Anyway, look, Danny, you, you think yeah. about that. He's so lost you know in what? thought. I'm I, have looking two at his- more, I have 200 more episodes to wait before we do Return of I'm the Jedi. I'm looking at his face and yes. I'm like, I'm like, Matt, I know you're rethinking life right now. We're going to get moving. Like, I'm having a mental breakdown. I'm like, wait, is Jedi not a good film? What the- That's what I'm saying. restructure That's what I'm the saying, order of man. stuff? Come Maybe. On. But yeah, Danny, you, you go, man. So, yeah, my I'm going to pick out a couple of them because this is just my favorite franchise and you can get over it. Uh, the it would be like asteroid belt chase, yes, oh, lovely. Um, because the whole action, the whole like CG or like the whole uh, special effects that they use back then to make that work, and the score with it is just like amazing. I love the shit out of that. And the um, potato, 
Yes, the floating potato that they flew. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's in um, that. Yeah. Also in that same movie, whenever uh, Luke is facing Vader, but it's not. Um, it's not right whenever in the beginning of that. It's like whenever the, most of the music isn't even playing and it's super quiet and they're fighting each other and they're both kind of like a little uh, unhinged and like kind of sweaty. They've been fighting a little bit. Like that's a bad scene. Um, I like that some of them. What, like, Vader's sweaty? You can tell, yeah. <laughs> the helmet has a sweat. He's all saturated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, then two other, like, then the other two that I'll bring up is uh, an Attack of the Clones, which I know people, some people just hate that, but I think that one has a lot of good, like, universe building, personally, even though there's some really off, fucking awful parts. Um, like the whole film? Sorry, go on. Them going through that belt on, I think it's Geonosis, where those bombs are going off. Um, I always thought was a really badass, like, scene that was, like, that was when those movies were coming out in theaters, and we could watch them in a theater, and when we saw it, and, and like, the like, the sound and everything just was amazing so and then the last one because colin was bringing it up was in rogue one when they're uh escaping jetta i think and like i, th- I guess the whatever the death star shot a really minimal amount of its power so the so that right. that city explodes and they're escaping on the ship uh and it's like a tidal wave of land that they're trying to escape like it's blocking out the sun while they're trying to leave is crazy as fuck to me so those yeah, are no, yeah high, those are my highlight scenes. I, they're probably Empire more than any of those other ones. I, but I will give Attack of the Clones this. Like, even it is my least favorite in the entire series. But Same. Um, yeah, I okay. will give it this, man. The way that it did the the Clone Wars or the start of the Clone Wars was outstanding, man. That Geonosis sequence, you can see like through the dust, the red and lo- red and blue like laser bolts going back and mm. forth, man. Fucking awesome. Well, and. I was gonna say one more thing. Also, the uh, the execution of Order sixty six in Revenge yeah, of the Sith yeah. that is Hell fucking yeah. good. That's that's pretty good. Execute Order sixty six. I can't do the voice. Damn. Um, Exe- execute Order sixty six. Are we all trying this now? Um, <laughs> no, no. Uh, Colin won't get this one, but if we're, you know, what's a moment that's really great that a lot of people sort of don't give enough credit for, um, and. I'm not saying this movie's on par with the original trilogy, but, and I'm not even saying this movie is on, like, a part of the original trilogy, but in um, The Last Jedi, uh, when Ray and, oh, sorry, man. Ray and, um, what's his name, Kylo, Kylo, like, they team up, that is yeah. an amazing sequence. Yeah. Yeah. That does not get enough credit. Yeah. We saw that together, man. Uh, we watched the opening night. I think we watched the midnight, actually. Yeah. yeah. Watching that sequence in a full sold out cinema with all Star Wars fans, and the way, like, when that score just drops out and it goes silent and they just go back to back, it's fucking incredible, man. Such uh, a great scene. And right after the twist with Snoke. Right, exactly. Is, right after the twist. You're not ready yeah. for, like, another great moment so quickly. Like, yeah. it's an ons. Like, it kind of makes up for almost all the flaws of that film, and there's so many leading up to right. that force awakens has but, a few for me as well like the the first reveal of the falcon and shit like that i'm not gonna go too i love far that into it. yeah yeah it's yeah. awesome oh, oh so, so you mean that you like i thought you were saying it was a flaw no no, it was no, no 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 it's yeah that, that's a yeah. great moment yeah. i would say um on that note of force awakens i want to ask danny and zoheb since colin hasn't seen it but one of the big criticisms of force awakens is oh, that no, it's yeah. too similar to a new hope how do you guys feel about that do you think it's too similar do you think it's different enough uh, Danny, you go first. It is uh, too similar to it for me to think it's like a favorite or one of my favorites. Um, but they uh, they reuse the same formula, and you kind of had the same Star Wars magic, but just with the regeneration of them uh, starting like that, the whole Star Wars franchise over from the end that we've always all known about. So, like, I'm okay. I, I like it because it restarted the whole trilogy that they were trying to get back and going but um i haven't had the urge to go back and rewatch it mm. so that i although i although i can see the points uh that people make you know oh it is very similar to star wars and you hope um i i disagree man it doesn't take away anything for me uh from that movie at all i love that movie like that movie sits really high uh i think honestly out of out of the if uh, if we're ranking, that might be my third or fourth favorite Star Wars film. Um, it, it, even like it's a, it's definitely above Jedi for me. Um, 
I I adore that movie, and it's not just because J.J. Abrams. Like, it's there are definitely moments in there that a hundred percent feel Star Wars esque. Um, but yeah, man, I, I I definitely see the criticism, and I definitely see what they're doing. Um, especially with the character of Ray, who's basically sort of Luke. She's this ambitious person who wants to get off the planet, but he starts on a desert planet, right? Yeah, but they do more yeah. with Ray. Like they, yeah. they, like they. I mean, you know, there's this whole mis- mystery about her family and stuff, you know. And you can argue how that's resolved in Last Jedi, or if it's not even resolved at, at all yet. We'll see. Um, I, I feel like I'm kind of in agreement with you, but I feel like they took the formula of A New Hope and actually improved it. I'm not saying it's a better movie, but like if some of the lessons they learned from New Hope used in um used in Force Awakens were used in A New Hope, it would make A New Hope even better and stand the test of time even more so than Ori does, which is saying a lot. And I and I the only reason I can say it is because hindsight is twenty twenty. Right. But um uh I don't feel like it takes away the only thing that takes away from Force Awakens is the fact how The Last Jedi just seemed to be like it feels yeah, like the that's, director, a, that's another. It feels like the director of, yeah. spite and kind of undid some plot points for that. We're not touching that. Right. That's, <laughs> that's a whole that's, other podcast. Yeah. Um, there is one thing about, uh, I guess, Force Awakens for me that that takes away from, like, they restarted the the this new trilogy, but it it seems like a missed opportunity because they decided to take the formula, like you said, Danny, uh, and basically just have the rebellion against the Empire again. Like mm. you have the res- the first the resistance against the First Order with a, a I guess another Death Star. Like you have so many opportunities to go in another direction, uh, you know. But instead, you kind of like want one one army versus another army, which is you know I guess Star Wars, but it's still so you can do something else. I imagine like they were very scared making a new thing and being like oh totally. how do you like how do we still get the star wars magic and that's why i like with some of the spin-offs and why i'm sad why they're not doing them as much now because um they've proven you can still have star wars feeling action sequences not do it like in solo the train sequence yeah. or in or just having that fucking hawaii planet in rogue one scarif, you know yeah. scarif like that's a i remember seeing that location it's like oh finally something we haven't seen before in a while. Like Naboo was even a nice take. Um, we are getting off topic though. Yeah. Uh, all right, Matt, you got uh, Colin, Danny, uh, Colin, Danny, Matt, you guys got anything else you want to talk about regarding uh, specifically episode four before we head off? Ah, mm-hmm. fuck, you put a clause in there, you lawyer yeah. bastard. <laughs> Come on, dude, I look at contracts and shit, it's part of my job. What's, uh, all right, you know what, let's go out of the ambit of that. What, what, what did you have to say? I was going to say that if I had to actually, if I'm going to pick something that's not a Star Wars film related, one of my favorite stories has one of my favorite scenes, Star Wars The Force Awakens. The, or, I'm sorry, Star Wars... Uh, oh, what? The Force, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Star Wars The Force Unleashed, the video ah, game. I'm sorry. Oh. That, uh, the Force Unleashed is one of the best Star Star Wars stories, in my opinion, it has one of the most um, like compelling characters. I love Galen Merrick, you know, the Star Killer. I fucking love that. Uh, the fact that he bounces between both sides all the time, and the scene of him using the Force to pull a fucking like Star Destroyer down is—I mean, it's OP as fuck. That's just insane. But at the so same cool, time, though. seeing him just. <laughs> And just fucking like giving all to bring that thing down. I was like, dude, this guy is like the this guy is like the fucking celestials of the Jedi and the Sith. Like this guy is the most powerful one I've ever seen. And I really wish they would do one proper. I really wish they would do something with Star Killer. But unfortunately, that's not really canon anymore. I don't think. I think that that's just kind of been thrown out the window from what I've heard. But that's a, that's that's really that's all I've got to say. That's that's my closing thoughts. Well, bro, if you want to talk like outside of movie stuff, um, I for what after Disney bought Marvel, they started. Sorry, Disney bought Star Wars. They did these um a new run of comics that were supposedly canon. Um, uh, that took where the act like the drawings look like the actors and all that. And the idea was to fill the gaps between Episode Four and Five, and they touch on stuff that you wouldn't even think of and had some really amazing moments. Like they had this moment where there's a plot point where Darth Vader hires Boba Fett to, because in um, A New Hope, he sees Luke, but they'd never actually fight or he just, there's that shootout thing with the ships and Darth Vader's like, I want to know who that is. Sends Boba Fett out, does a mission, 
Luke fights Bobber, and it's like the first time he tries to use a lightsaber a- against someone properly, and like Luke just fucking fails. Um, and Bobber does all his research, and he goes back to Vader, and he's like, gives him a file, and Vader's just like he looks out the window at his father, and goes, "I have a son." Because Vader, you got to think, Vader's never known he's had a son. Like he wasn't there for the birth. Mm. nothing like he just knew that padme was pregnant and like they have like they do moments like that which are like really cool um or for i stopped reading it pre after like five or six issues but that was a really cool moment i like while we're here um just before we head off and really quickly um let's because we've all played them uh what is everyone's favorite star wars game i've already said mine mm-hmm. so you guys you guys go oh no no, no you guys someone else will say the other one i'm thinking of you guys go ahead all right um battlefront yeah, God damn so, it, somebody right off the yeah. rip. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to, yeah, I'm with you, Matt, but I want to specify not the new DICE Battlefronts, uh, the, the older ones. Um, Battlefront 2 mm-hmm. is Battlefront cool. 1 and 2. I think 2 was fantastic, man. Yes. Yeah. Um, I like the the first one by DICE. Yeah. I like just uh, the graphics and the sound. Like I felt like I was oh, in yeah. Star Wars, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely they agree. They handle like, a lot of shit wrong. Visually and audibly, yeah, it's fantastic. But, man, I think my favorite Star Wars game, fucking Star Wars Racer on the Nintendo 64, yes! dude. Yes! <laughs> that shit Neither was... Neither key. Neither key all day, man. <laughs> man, I was Sebulba using his flamethrower events, dude. Like, Bro, I love that Sebulba shit. Sebulba had awful handling, and he wasn't that fast. How dare know. you. <laughs> I love that you remember that. <laughs> I know. I love that you remember that. Um, Danny, what's your favorite Star Wars game? It, it would be between uh, Star Wars Jedi Knight Two Jedi Outcast or Star Ooh. Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Nice. Nice. No. Well, you didn't. Um, what was the sequel to Outcast? Was that Academy or was that the the yes, one before? Yes, and, and I thought that was going to be Colin's pick, honestly. Uh, no, I I really loved it. But if I had follow ups, um, Shadow of the Empire and uh, Shadow of the Empire and in uh, sixty four Rogue Squadron, uh, I beat the hell out of both of those. So those oh, are yeah. like nostalgic favorites, but they're not the one that like really made me right. go, "Oh my gosh!" Ro- Rogue yeah, Squadron. Speaking of nostalgia, it, it, oh, if I had nostalgia, all the ones in Super Nintendo, man, I used to love those, but they were just mm. too fucking hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, just real quick. So another point I wanted to bring up watching this movie back. Um, it actually made me appreciate Rogue One a lot more because Rogue One writing that script, like the fact that they had to fill in or sort of explain so much stuff, they did it so organically. Like, yeah, like I was watching this and like, oh, that is weird that they just briefly mentioned that and then never bring it up again. <laughs> but then I realized, oh, this is a big thing in Rogue One. Like, then they do that a few times. So, totally. That's cool. Um, and, and the other thing I think we should mention yeah, is yeah. the toy situation. Oh, man. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, let's uh, just quickly, briefly mention it here because we like we will get into Lucas a bit more. So, Do you want to uh, do that on this episode or on the next one? You know what? We'll do it on the next one because yeah. we're gonna we're gonna. I know when I get, I know we're gonna talk Lucas, uh, and I know we're going to talk merchandising. So yeah. Um. So well, just, you know, let's just say that's a it's a preview. It's something that'll happen. Right. Exactly. So, that's a long convo, I think. So Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is one of my f- most anticipated games of the year, man. Like that that game is going to be made by the guys who made Modern Warfare Two. Uh, they were formerly of Infinity Ward. So really hmm. fucking keen for that. I've never even um, heard of that. Yeah, yeah, it was only announced recently. There's no trailer or anything like that. Um, mm-hmm. so. Oh, that keeps getting delayed, that one, hey? I think so. Yeah. All right, guys, uh, anything else to say before we head off here? Head off? Nope. Nope. Um, There's always something, Matt. Let's go. Just Okay, just that. <laughs> this is one of the very few. <laughs> Wake me up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't worry. I'm... No, no, no. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Fucking around, you little fucking now everybody, now everybody felt really bad. Like, oh, come on, dude. <laughs> we care, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the only one in the trilogy that's directed by George Lucas. Correct. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I just want to say, like, and I don't want to rip on a guy who, thanks to him, changed the fucking world, but I don't think he's a great director. I think he's a great story guy and an idea guy. Yeah. But when when I know that like how much work like in the editing room they had to change shit and fix it up to to fix sort of his errors, it's like okay, there's that. But then, and I, I, admittedly, it's not always fault. There are production issues and stuff too. But yeah, then and, you and, see he went on to like, direct all three sequels 
uh, prequels by himself. And he was sort of like unchecked, like not having someone tell him no, the fact that everyone just took him as yes. And that, that's how the prequels ended up the way they were. Um, love them. Mm. I hate them. Um, they're definitely more flawed. I would say than both the trilogy, original trilogy and the newer films. Um, so yeah, I think he. I just want to go, man. Just say like, so there are moments even in this film where I'm just like, oh, maybe this actor could have benefited from a from a director who was a bit more, I don't know, directier. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's a good word. Is that, a, is that an industry term? <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think I definitely agree. Um, like I said, even though this is my favorite film, um, I definitely agree. This is not the best directed or the most well made. Um, I think you know Irvin Kershner, who did the uh, who did uh, Empire, was miles ahead of George. Yeah. And uh, you know, mm-hmm. once you read the stories about George kind of interfering with uh, Kershner's work on that movie, uh, oh, it's, I don't know it's much wild. about that. Yeah, that one. Yeah, it. especially. And apparently, George had a lot of kind of um, power over Richard Richard Markand, who directed the sixth one. I can see that. Yeah. So yeah, and you know. Just go out and watch the Red Letter Media reviews for uh, Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith because they are outstanding. They've got all of the evidence of George Lucas pretty much directing the movies from the armchair. Um, literally, like, he screened Phantom Menace for, like, uh, studio executives, and he, like, after the screening, he's like, oh, I think I might have gone a bit too far there. Yeah, but- yeah, yeah <laughs> He's like, that. yeah, they're like, they're like, George, don't go overboard, and they watch it, and he goes... I, I, I might have gone a, a little. <laughs> oh, well, uh, this impression, yeah. by the way, this impression of George Lucas is totally inaccurate. Everybody has this <laughs> weird, like, "Hey, uh, my name's George Lucas," and, and that is not how he sounds. It's just not how he sounds. Dude. He's got a, he's got a, a he's, got, he's pretty croaky, man. I don't know. <laughs> but dude, everybody makes him sound like Kermit the Frog when his balls drop. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, dude, come make, the fuck on. But you're gonna make fun of something, yeah. <laughs> like you know. Um, yeah, let's not make fun of his double chin or his huge ego. Let's make fun of his fucking non-existent Kermit the Frog voice. <laughs> well, yeah, you know what? That's because I, you know? So. I, I have a double chin and a fucking huge <laughs> ego, so I'm not going to make fun of those. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, like, we might as well just, like, uh, stop, stop talking shit. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> um, that's a... Yeah. yeah. All right, on that note, guys, Danny, do you have anything to say? No, I'm good. All right, guys, uh, on that note, let's close this out. Uh, we have a big, big episode ahead of us. Uh, we are recording that next, although it probably won't be released straight after. So another great moments to trash compact the scene. Okay, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fantastic. I saw him like thinking about it. I'm just like, oh, here we go. All right, guys, we will see you soon for the big 100 episode. And follow us on social media. Oh yes, that too. Bye. And I love you. <laughs> and may the force be with you.